Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining us today for our 30 on Thursday webinar, Project Management Made Easy, Exploring Planner and Office 365 Groups. A little bit about us before we get started. Pertivity is a global consulting firm that helps companies solve problems in finance, technology, operations, governance, risk, and compliance. Our enterprise content management solution is within the IT consulting group of Pertivity. Pertivity is in over 70 offices around the world, and we have over 3,000 professionals. Our 30 on Thursday webinar series is actually going into our fifth year now. It's a 30-minute webinar series where we talk all things SharePoint and enterprise content management. We have two great webinars coming up in April. If you're interested in registering for either of these, you can register at our website, um, ecm.pertivity.com slash webinars. We are offering a free one-hour introductory consultation for everyone on the call today um, for our on-demand SharePoint support. We do everything from performance troubleshooting to system health checks and Nintex workflows to business intelligence. If you're interested in scheduling a one-hour introductory consultation, you can schedule it today by emailing us at ecm at We are doing some live tweeting today during the presentation. You can tweet us your questions and feedback at Pertivity ECM and use the hashtag 30TOffice365. Today's session is being recorded. Um, it will be with the, an archive of all of our past sessions on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash PertivitySP. You can tweet us your questions at uh, Pertivity ECM using the hashtag 30TOffice365 or use the question window in the GoToMeeting toolbar and we will get to all the questions at the end of the presentation. Today's presenter is Maggie Swearingen. She is an experienced architect here at Pertivity and I am Julia Marple and I will be moderating today's session. All right, so let's get started. All right, Maggie, you can take it from here. Great. Let me know when you can see my screen. Yep, it looks great. Perfect. Hi, everyone. Well, thanks for taking your lunch session to enjoy us or to join us this afternoon. Um, we're going to spend the next couple minutes talking about um, Office 365 and Planner and Groups. Uh, these are two great new modules that have been introduced into Office 365 in. Um, you know, in the past year or so. And so we're going to talk about them and about when you would use them. Um, but first, I really want to set the stage here and talk about Office 365 usage. I think it's really safe to say that we have seen a dramatic uptick in organizations um, adopting the Office 365 platform. As recently as 15 or 18 months ago, there were really a handful of organizations that we work with who were even really considering going to Office 365 and moving away from their on-premise um, implementations. And now those, those numbers are dramatically going up. And part of the reason is because some of the tools we're going to show you today, that they really put productivity in the hands of the user. Um, so these are just some really interesting high-level statistics here um, that just talk about how much Office 365 has really um, grown in, in even the last year. Um, Particularly to that middle one, I find staggering 500% Office 365 growth rate in mid-sized companies just in the last year. I mean, that's, that's a humongous, humongous jump. So we're really dealing with a shift here in applications and, and productivity, and I think it's fair to say that we all, we all have to be, be ready for that. Um, that being said, there is a whole lot going on in Office 365, and I think it can be very overwhelming for organizations who are moving to the cloud. Um, what, what do you move first? Uh, how do you train? How do you teach users how to use it? Um, something that, some of the things I'm going to show you today I think you'll find don't really require any training at all. Uh, maybe they require some governance and some introduction, but actually the usage of the tools is very, very simple. Um, but there's a, there's a lot going on up in Office 365, and I think implementation and moving to the cloud is just as much about planning for what's right for your organization 
um, as, as actually doing, doing the implementation. Um, so today we're going to focus a little bit about project management in, in the cloud. Um, and I will tell you that I am an ex-project manager. Um, I was fired from that role for very, very good reasons. I'm terrible at it. Uh, if, if you wanted to torture me, I, one way to do that would be to make me learn Microsoft Project. Uh, it, is, it is far too complicated <laughs> um, for my needs, and I have absolutely no interest in it. Um, however, I do want to note that you know, Project Server is, is out there. Um, it is licensed separately, um, and there are some, some, additional, some additional things you need to do to get it working you know, properly with your Office 365 environment. Um, but you can, you can use that functionality in the cloud if you, if you are so inclined. Um, however, what we're going to focus on today are um, two other project management features for those of us who are not so inclined. Um, the first one is Planner. Planner was introduced um, in Q3 last year in beta. Um, Planner is a really, really lightweight project management tool um, that, that really helps you assign tasks and um, use collateral with a project with relative ease. Um, the second is Office 365 Groups. And I, I think it's fair to say that um, if we were looking at a Venn diagram, Office 365 Groups would be the big circle, and Planner would probably be a little circle inside of it. Um, they, they kind of come together hand in hand. When you create a plan, you actually are also creating a group, um, but you can have a group without having a plan. Um, so we'll talk a little bit about that. So the biggest question that, I've, that I get lately when I walk into clients um, talking about Office 365 is what to use when. Um, when, do, when would I create a, a group versus a SharePoint site? Um, when would I even potentially use Yammer? Um, why would I use Planner or, or in a group over using Project? Things like that. Um, and the, the answer is, is that there is no clear-cut answer for when you should use what. Um, Office 365 at this stage requires some thought with use for use cases and user scenarios around each of these tools. And then some education for your users about when you, as a project team, would recommend when to use which tools. So here are some, here are some examples. And this actually, um, this actually comes from something that I've, that I've been working on that goes through a lot of user scenarios with different tools in Office 365. And sort of the options and then the recommendation for probably which is best in each of those scenarios even though you have a lot of options in the scenarios. So the scenario we're working on today is pretty straightforward. Um, you know, I need a working group. I need a place for documents and tasks and project management. I think in the old days, quote unquote, we would have gone ahead and created a SharePoint team site. And that is absolutely still an option. You can still do that. Um, there, I believe, is a very specific use case around it, though. And in my mind, it, it's when documents or when collateral from projects in particular need extensive metadata or potentially they need workflows attached to them. So, you know, if that is the case in, this, in a, the particular scenario you're working in, then SharePoint would be a really, really good choice for you in that scenario. Um, you know, you can, you can also share externally using SharePoint, particularly in Office 365, um, depending on your governance in your particular SharePoint environment. Um, you know, if I need to ex include external users in the project, well, one very simple way to do that in Office 365, um, particularly if you're not comfortable with external sharing from your SharePoint implementation, is to create an external network in Yammer to do that. Now, there hasn't been a lot of talk about Yammer in the last year. Um, in, you know, 2014, it was the hot topic among Microsoft and SharePoint people where's Yammer going, what it's doing, why we should use it. Um, that's really cooled down significantly in the last year, but it's still there. Um, it's bundled in your Office 365. Uh, there is no additional licensing fees to invite external users to an external network if you need to. Um, so it's a nice way to have collaboration going on in your Office 365 environment. Um, 
and with, with relative ease also. And then lastly, really the two options we're going to talk about today, um, I say in the, in the user scenario, I hate Microsoft Project. Um, I think you could also say I hate SharePoint in, in this example too. Um, you know, I think a lot of people are still intimidated by SharePoint. They're intimidated by the overhead that it takes to run a team site effectively and efficiently. Um, but Planner or an Office 365 group are fantastic options for that light power user. Um, that person who really can see the value in this technology wants to start using it, but doesn't feel the need to have extensive training uh, for SharePoint. All right, so what are we going to walk through here in the next 15 minutes or so? Well, we're going to go ahead and create a new group and take a look at what that looks like. Um, we'll talk a little bit about group privacy, group inboxes, adding members, and then we'll take a quick walk through some of the features in a group. Um, it is, I don't think, any coincidence that the features in groups and honestly the entire look and feel of groups looks very, very similar to the, way, to the look and feel of Yammer groups. Again, I said I don't think that's an accident. It's probably not. Um, one, of the, one of the positive pieces of feedback you often hear about Yammer is how much easier the groups are to administer and how much st more straightforward they are than a SharePoint team site. Um, and then we'll dig a little bit into Planner. Um, and we'll talk about adding tasks and adding buckets and what that means. And then we'll take a look at some of the fancier features of Planner, including the Planner Hub and um, my tasks. Something that's important to understand about groups and planner. Um, they are completely pre-packaged applications built into Office 365. What you see is what you get. Um, you cannot change them. You can't change the branding on them, um, just, you know, except for a few color changes here and there. Um, they, are, you know, they, are, they are inflexible in that way. Um, however, you will see them growing and changing and improving over time, um, particularly if you're, you know, if you're in a group that is a first release group in Office 365. Um, I think it's pretty safe to say that you'll see some updates and changes to these over the course of the next year, year and a half, um, as, as, they, as people begin using them more frequently. All right, so let's jump over here. And you'll see here in my Office 365 environment that I am actually in my Outlook application. Um, this is obviously by design. Um, most of us are still very, very comfortable administering our daily lives, our daily professional lives from our email. And so what we've done here is that they've taken this group and planner concept and they've built it really, the jumping off point at least, into Outlook, um, which, was, which was, in my opinion, a very good idea. I'm not having to go anywhere else to get to my groups. Um, I have a few groups over here, as you'll see. Um, some of them are actually tied, tied to plans um, in Planner, and some of them are just ad hoc groups. Um, we'll be digging into my demo group in a little bit, but I do want to show you how easy it is to add a new group. I think as you're looking at it here, you could probably figure it out yourself without any sort of demo. Um, the plus sign there. I get a little slide out panel and I'm able to create my group. Um, I am going to go ahead and create a new group because I want to show you what happens when you kick off some of the features in the group. Um, so we'll call this 30 Thursday. And you can see my group ID is available. So it gives you a group ID. Your group ID um, ties into the URL for the group. So if you wanted to change the ID for some reason, you could as long as it's available. Um, you can give the group description. And then you can decide on the group's privacy. Um, groups can be either public or private. Those are really the only two options. So public, you know, anyone can see what's inside. Private, only members can see what's inside. Um, you know, probably for the most part when you're creating groups, they're going to be private. Um, I see a great transition for ad hoc project sites that organizations typically set up in team sites to transition over to this group's functionality. Um, it, just, it just really makes a lot of sense because of the usability of the tool. So I'm going to go ahead and create mine as private right now. This is the other fantastic feature you're going to see here, the group email. 
So I, I think all of us, um, it's fair to say, uh, have been looking forward to the death of listservs for some time now, um, potentially even close to a decade for many of us. Um, but yet they still have not died. People hang on to their listservs. Um, so interestingly enough, you can subscribe to any of these groups and get the conversations in a listserv format, quote unquote. Also, you can email directly into the groups, which is great. Um, if you're somewhere on your mobile device and you need to reply to a conversation, you can do that through the email and conversation thread in the group. So I'm going to go ahead here and I'm going to create my group. And then I'm going to add just, just a few members, just for the sake of argument here. And I'll click Add. And so now we have a new group with, with three members. Let's go ahead and take a look, however, at my current demo group. Let me go back where I was. So here's my current demo group, and you can see um, my conversation starts almost, almost like an email thread here. Um, so the first fu feature functionality here is this conversation that's back and forth. Um, this is actually even a little bit more robust than um, the old news feed that a lot of us have been using in SharePoint. Um, one of the, you know, one of the features of the news feed that m many people wish was there but it was not is um, the ability to attach a document. You can always link to a document in news feed, but you can't attach one. Well, here they've built in that attachment feature. Again, not surprisingly, like Yammer has it, which was something that people always really appreciated. Um, I'm just going to type a quick message there, and we're going to take a look at what it looks like when you attach. So you'll see when I attach, I get a variety of options from where I can attach. Um, I can attach from my OneDrive. I could attach from our group, from files from a different group. Um, and I can even attach from my, from my own computer. Um, I'm going to go ahead and just attach from my computer for right now. And I can upload it to the group files. So group files actually live in their own OneDrive. Or I can just attach it as a copy to, um, to the email. I'm going to go ahead and upload it to my group files here. And then I'm just going to send. If you're subscribed, you're actually going to get this via email. So again, you know, taking that transition between, you know, the email way of working and bringing it online into the cloud in a more productive, more collaborative sense, um, Groups is really bridging that gap where I think that we had a lot of trouble bridging that with just using SharePoint, for example. Um, a couple other things I want to point out here, the calendar. So you'll notice when I open the calendar, I have my group calendar and my personal calendar side by side. So unfortunately, they're not one calendar necessarily, as I think many of us would hope. Um, but they are there side by side, much in the way you would overlay a calendar um, from a SharePoint site or share it into your Outlook. Let's take a look at files really quickly here. So you'll notice files. Once I open the files, I've opened up a new tab. And I'm actually going to a OneDrive for this particular group. Um, I have files here, email attachments. That actually came from the conversation. So, that, so when I posted it to the conversation, it actually put the attachment with the content up here. And I can also see over here not just the files we have, but files that have potentially been shared with us by another group. So again, this lends credence to that one version of the truth mantra that many of us go around promoting. Um, we want to have one version of a document. We can do that a lot easier here because this sharing concept is facilitated. And so as a project group, if I'm in accounting and we have an accounting project and IT has ownership over a certain document, they can share it with us. It's surfaced here. We can see it. But there's really still only one version of it. I'm not double posting it in our project site so that we can get a copy of it. And you can see here, now my new 30 Thursday group that I just created um, is, is in existence. Um, you'll notice that if I were to click on files here, which we were running low on time, so I won't do, um, it actually takes a few minutes. It gives you that nice, we're working, please be patient message. Um, because what it's doing is it's kind of, it's firing up all of these different 
applications and tying them all into all into groups for you. All right, so I'm going to go over here really quick to my waffle. And I'm actually going to go to Planner. And you, what you will see in Planner are many of my groups that I created. So what we can do is we can add a plan to a group at any time. So if I'm in my demo group, for example, you can see that since I'm on my Planner Hub, which is actually my dashboard, um, that I can see how many tasks I have left um, and what I haven't started yet for that particular group. You can build your own dashboard. So depending on how many groups you're participating in and what tasks are assigned to you, you'll be able to have a really, really nice visual of what's upcoming and what you still have to do straight from your planner hub. You'll also be able to take a look at your My Tasks view, which breaks down your tasks in various buckets um, mixed up by which, which project and then priority. I'm going to go ahead into here to my demo group. And I feel like it's almost funny to even be demoing this and showing people how to do it because it really is so straightforward. Um, all I need to do if I want to add a task is click this plus sign. And here's my new task. I can set the due date, and I can assign it to someone. And then I add it. And you can see it lines up right here. Um, you can certainly edit them, change them, and update them. You can add attachments. Um, you can add a checklist um, if there's subtasks that have to do with a particular task. Um, and also, you can have a conversation around a task any back and forth that has to do with the task. You can also drag and drop tasks based on your buckets. So I like to think of buckets as um, boards. Uh, they could be titled however you want them to be titled. Uh, you could have buckets for each member of the group. You could have buckets for every phase of the project, which would make sense, and all of the particular tasks under that phase. Um, in this example, I actually just set up my buckets to be you know, different, different statuses for the tasks. So if I had started revising my document as, a, as the end user, I'm going to drag it into the in progress bucket there. And then I can start to view you know, what's in progress and how things are going. Um, this is the board view, but there's also the chart view here. And the chart view gives us what you might imagine, um, status and charts for particular projects. So slightly different than the, hub, than the planner hub, since that's really geared toward you as the individual. Um, this is for the, pro, the specific project. You'll notice here, too, that if I click my ellipses, I have all of my group features built right in here. So those same documents that we were dealing with earlier, just in our group sense, are here and easily accessible from our plan should we, should we need them for our planning project. So two separate pieces of functionality and two separate applications, um, but very, very closely intertwined. So I'll stop there. We have about five minutes left in today's session um, and check with everyone and see if there are any questions. Great. Thanks, Maggie. Um, we do have a couple of questions. The first question we have is, does Office 365 respect SharePoint permissions? Yes, I believe it, I believe it does. Um, so let's say you had a document in a SharePoint group, or excuse me, in a SharePoint site, um, and that document had certain permissions on it, and you were sharing it with your Office 365 group, potentially um, through, through a conversation thread in the, in the site the way we looked at. Um, if I'm a member of the Office 365 group, but I don't have access to the document that's living in SharePoint, I still won't be able to access it. So you know, SharePoint permissions are respected throughout this process uh, as they pertain to um, documents and assets you might be sharing around these sites. Um, you know, likewise, the same would be true if something was shared from someone's you know, OneDrive that they hadn't that they hadn't explicitly given given you shared rights to. OK, great. Um, can you add more than one person to a task? That's a great question. 
I actually haven't tried it, to be honest with you. Let's see. It doesn't look like you can, um, no, but uh, Julia, if you can take a note of who asked that question, and I'll do a little bit of extra research and check and see. That's a fantastic question. Okay, will do. Um, would I still need to use project for a timeline? Is there any way to import a timeline? No, there's not. Like I said, what you see here is what you get. So if the, um, if the chart, if the timeline aspects of the chart don't necessarily um, meet your needs if what you see here is not that, you know, the timeline, the Gantt chart look and feel that you're looking for. Unfortunately, you know, it doesn't, it won't tie in here. You can't, you can't visualize the information that way. Now, nothing would stop you, of course, from linking to your, to your project plan or, um, or potentially, um, you know, uploading uploading your project plan as a as a document file to the site, of course, and then people could open it in the native application. But there isn't any way to visualize that data in a timeline fashion. Okay, great. Um, can my files in my SP group have metadata attached to them? Yes and no. Um, so that's a bit of a complicated question. So. Remember, the files in your, um, in your SharePoint group are actually living in OneDrive. Um, there are ways with PowerShell, um, and if anybody's particularly interested, we can send out a link to a TechNet article um, for, for getting at adding some custom metadata to OneDrive files. Um, and that, that functionality um, could, could potentially be used here in this use case. Um, I have never actually done it. So we would, you know, we'd want to work through that process. Um, like I said, I think it's very safe to say if you, um, if you have documents that require extensive metadata or if you have documents that um, are going to require extensive workflows, that really in that case, the better use would be um, a SharePoint site at this point until potentially some of those features are introduced into some of these tools. Okay, great. We did have one question about the recording. The recording of today's uh, presentation will be posted on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash ProtivitySP. We will be sending that link out um, in a follow-up email. If anyone has any more questions, you have a, one minute to get them in. If not, that is it for today's presentation. Thank you, Maggie, for uh, the great information here. Thank you, everyone, for attending today's session, and we will see you in two weeks. Thanks, everyone. Thank you.